Fernand was about to experience a fate worse than death, which left him with two options, actual death since that would be better, or an attempt at combating that fate. He didn't have time to think that through in the two seconds he had left, so his fight or five reflex chose for him, but how to fight? The moment the contact telepathic mentalist slivering at him touched him, his mind would become clay for the thing to tear apart. He had to use and direct existing thoughts, railroading his mind straight into insanity. This much was known from others, from those that had lived the seconds required to explain what had been done to them, before promptly willing themselves to die. He was actually trained to defeat this sort of attack, and that training came down to shooting the mentalist before it could touch him, which is hard to do with a modern slack for a rifle. Two seconds to find a solution. No time to think things through. Ferdinand went for the first thought that came to mind. Mental palace. What did he consider calming and familiar? That was easy. That was carved into him. He didn't even have to look for the answer. When he was six, his parents made him play a game. It was called Doom. They said it was one of the first. They said it was critical he play it first, that only after he beat it would he be allowed to play other computer games. The child wanted to play other games, and was very motivated to get through his parents' chore. That chore turned out to be the coolest thing he'd ever experienced, and the six-year-old was impressed. The game imprinted into him. He judged every other game he played against it, and found most of them lacking. When the war came, when he was fighting for his life, he judged that same game in contrast with the real thing, no matter how stupid or morbid that was. Murderous confidence, stolen from that same game, became his anthem of survival. In his head he began to play Doom, an endless level but by a subconscious one that just went on and on forever. But instead of remembering the pixels and primitive animations, he replaced the game's visuals, sounds and motions with the five years of combat that had preceded this day. Five years of real killing, real bleeding, and real dying. But he still moved with the speed of the game's character, and still fought one against all, at a pace and manner no soldier ever fought at and lived to tell about. The mentalist reaching mass splashed against his chest, stabbing through the chestplate to touch his skin. Usually after that, death came three seconds later. The victim's mind gutted, intel extracted, personality torn apart with his own worst fears. Two seconds after touching Fernand, the mentalist began to screech. The whole mass rippled, cringed, contorted, and probably tore itself in two. Fernand staggered back, his mind many days older than it had been seconds ago, eyes glazed. From the side, a scattering of fire made the two halves of the mentalist stop thrashing. Sarge finished reloading. Reflexively, Fernand sidewalked behind a column, where he froze, blinking rapidly. Sergeant and the commander were beside him a second later. With sudden focus and raised eyebrows, Ferdinand first met Sarge's, then the commander's eyes. Then he stared at the mentalist's corpse, one of a hundred scattered throughout the chamber. Sarge and the commander frowned at the first and only survivor of a mentalist attack, somewhat relieved by his coherence. Shit, Sarge said. The commander drew a sword and loomed over the motionless mentalist. Ferdinand, you are fucked up in the head.